It was 1 a.m., and David Watson sat in his dark living room, a solitary figure shrouded in the shadows of guilt. The room seemed to echo with the haunting memories of the accident that had unfolded just hours before. The dim glow of the streetlights outside filtered through the curtains, casting a somber ambience. Watson's mind was a chaotic whirlwind, replaying the events of the evening like a relentless loop. The red light, the urgency, the blaring horns, the violent impact, it all unfolded in his mind's eye with agonizing clarity. He could still feel the tremors that had coursed through his body as he sped away from the chaos, leaving the injured bicyclist sprawled on the pavement. The weight of his actions pressed down on him, and the voice of reason echoed in his head. Why did you run, you idiot? The repercussions of that impulsive decision manifested in his thoughts. The specter of potential imprisonment, the ruin of his career, the loss of his family, and the bleak erasure of his future. In the solitude of his living room, David wrestled with his conscience. A constant internal debate urged him to do the right thing, turn himself in, face the consequences, and seek redemption. Why not just go to the police right now? You can afford a lawyer, whispered a small voice of reason. But fear, regret, and shame held him captive in the shadows of his own making. Then an ominous tap echoed through the silent house, as if fate itself were knocking on his door. Panic surged through David, the sound amplifying his sense of impending doom. They found me. The mere possibility of facing the consequences of his actions sent shivers down his spine. With trembling hands, he rose from his seat, compelled to confront the inevitable. The journey to the front door felt like a descent into the abyss. Each step was a reminder that there was no escape from the choices he had made. The tap persisted, a relentless drumbeat that mirrored the pounding of his guilty heart. As he opened the door, a cold gust of wind carried a sense of foreboding. The porch light cast an unforgiving glow on the stern face of a police officer standing before him. The officer's expression was grave, and David felt the air grow heavy Mr. with an Watson. unspoken revelation. It's the police. Mr. Watson, inquired the officer, the words hanging heavily in the air. David's heart sank as he managed a defeated nod. The officer's eyes held a somber truth, and David's mind raced with dread. I am sorry, but I'm afraid I have some bad news, the officer uttered, and time seemed to freeze. The words hung in the air like a dark cloud, ready to unleash a storm of despair. David's throat tightened, and he could barely bring himself to listen. Your son's bike was struck by a hit-and-run driver this evening. He died at the scene, the officer continued, his voice carrying the weight of sorrow. The room seemed to close in on David as the reality of his actions collided with the devastating news. A profound silence settled, broken only by the distant wails of sirens. I'm very sorry for your loss, the officer concluded, offering condolences that felt like a cruel juxtaposition against the backdrop of David's guilt-ridden conscience. The truth was out, the consequences were inescapable, and the darkness that enveloped David's world deepened into an abyss of remorse. 